You're listening to the Self Made is a Myth, Make a Difference Together show with your host, Coach Tim Campsall, where we talk with successful business owners to hear the stories of their journeys in building their successful businesses. And more importantly, we recognize the folks who help them excel because we know that achieving business success is not something we can do on our own. Hello, everyone. This is Coach Tim Campbell, and I'm excited to have a fellow business owner with us today from Ohio. My guest lived three years in New York City after graduating, and check this out, never saw a single famous person. That's just crazy. (laughs) In her downtime, she likes to spend time with her two-year-old daughter, as well as being a foodie. And it's best when she's able to combine the two. And we're going to ask her a little bit about that here in a minute. She's most proud of starting and growing two businesses and getting her MBA all while pregnant. And I think the story goes something like she graduated with a two-month-old uh, in her arms. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> it's my pleasure to welcome Terry to the show today. Hello, Terry. Hi. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Well, hey, let's start with having you introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit of your personal story, like where you're born and live, about your family and some of your hobbies. Yeah, for sure. Um, so was born in Cleveland, Ohio, um, to, to just like the suburbs over there. Um, after graduation, made my way over to University of Toledo, where I actually got a degree in education. So I wanted to become a uh, high school biology teacher. Um, got hired at a charter school in Newark, New Jersey for sixth grade. Whenever they told me sixth grade, I was like, you mean 16 year olds, right? Uh, (laughs) They met middle school, um, which I'm actually really thankful for. Middle school is definitely, um, my area of expertise. I loved it. Loved teaching science to those kiddos. Um, my, uh, now husband, uh, his job as a manufacturing engineer in New York city, wasn't really cutting it. There's only so much you can do in that area. So we end up making our way back to Ohio, where we live in Columbus right now. Um, yeah, we run two different businesses, like you said. Um, got my two-year-old daughter right now, who's uh, full of energy and and always keeps us really busy. So, what kinds of foodie things do you do with your daughter? Yeah, so we we just love, you know, going out to eat, trying different cuisines. Uh, my husband runs a ramen cart here in Columbus. So we are just all about food. Um, and I, I there's nothing better than going out for some tacos. Um, <laughs> and the fact that now I've got a daughter that anytime I can look at someone and say, do you want to go get tacos? Like someone's are always down. Um, it's uh, it's really great to have, and she's she's really into trying all types of food right now too. Oh which wow, is awesome and and helps and uh yeah she's very she's very um outgoing whenever it comes to that too. So it's That's it's always wonderful. fun. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there is a funny story that your family likes to tell about you. Is there one that you'd be willing to share with us today? <laughs> um yeah so I think that with me uh it's definitely going to be an embarrassing uh story if it was up to my fantastic <laughs> uh, there was there was a time in elementary school where you know eating that that pudding cup and it just got on my pants so I had to get like a new pair of pants from <laughs> the nurse and my sister at the end of the day like held it up and it looked like I had an accident it was just, <laughs> it was really embarrassing so if you ask my family some deep stories and go back they're gonna they're going to really pull out some good ones. <laughs> That's awesome. I love <laughs> it. Thank you for sharing that with us. Terry, tell us, uh, how did the business come about? And at what point did you have the confidence that you could run your own business? Yeah. So for me, it started whenever I was still in education. Um, I was actually looking to start a little bit of a side hustle. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's kind of how I saw it whenever I was first beginning it. Um, but not only that, I wanted to learn the skill of bookkeeping because my husband and I always had this dream of starting a ramen business. Uh Um, and whenever I discovered that I can learn bookkeeping, um, and help out business owners, um, but also benefit from getting my hands on that experience, um, it just really made sense to me. So I started to get into the bookkeeping side of things, Uh, which I'm really happy because we were able to start the ramen business then during the pandemic, um, which really just helped us to have, you know, a few clients that I worked with at that time um, Mm. and started to build up those skills and, um, you know, really just got to know a lot of different industries and 
how business owners really tick with their <laughs> businesses. Yes. Um, it's just, it's really good to see that and to, you know, know what's kind of coming up financially for other business owners as I was learning from them, but also started to learn with our own business as well. <laughs> Hello and what is your name? Interview. <laughs> <laughs> is it a he or a him? It's a he, that's uh, Hamilton. Uh, um, and he's Hamilton <laughs> said that you forgot to introduce him and he was- Yes. Like, have to do with that. <laughs> so Terry, tell us more about the company. What's the name? What do you guys do? How do you help people? Yeah, so the, the company is Tarot Business Solutions. Uh, we are a full service bookkeeping company. So we actually help right now uh, businesses really from all industries, mm -hmm. um, more so because, you know, whenever it comes to the finances, it's all pretty much the same when you're looking out for uh, profitability and making sure that every, you know, dot of the I is done and everything is crossed with its T's. So um, we really serve a lot of different industries, but we are starting to focus a little bit more on vocational schools and helping out with higher education mm -hmm. and support in that in that realm. So we do most of our work on QuickBooks Online, um, which I think is the, the big name out there. Um, and it's a great tool, but it's also a bear of a tool if you <laughs> don't know the ins and outs. Um, yeah. And so it's easy to get lost in QuickBooks um, or to double things up, um, which is never good for tax season. <laughs> so that's what we help out with is to take those pains away from business owners who probably started a business not to do bookkeeping or right. deal with QuickBooks <laughs> online. Yes. They probably started because of some sort of passion. Um, and we want to help them get back to what they started their business for and that passion that really drove them to that work. That's fantastic. We recommend to all of our clients to outsource their bookkeeping because they need to know their numbers. They don't need to know how to get to their numbers. They just need to have the report. So for Absolutely. everyone listening, make sure to check out the company. Um, use the link in the description in the comment section and and go visit them on LinkedIn as well and uh, let, her, let Terry know that you watched her interview. Uh, Terry, share a story where someone pushed you or inspired you that you could do it, even though maybe you didn't think that you could, and the impact that that person had on you. Yeah, so I think that, you know, that's going to go back to education. Um, I, as you know, in your realm with coaching, um, I was really lucky to have a lot of experience with um, older, more mentor teachers coaching me through mm -hmm. Um teaching and we did it in a very extreme way of like videotaping ourselves almost like we're watching like play oh, wow. by play football games yeah. like we we really got into to coaching and my my first coach uh, my first uh two three years at uh north star academy in in newark new jersey she just really found a way to level things with me and make things real um and i think that i've continued with that whenever I started to help out others, whenever I became an assistant school principal, and especially now into my business, as I'm talking to business owners, I am making sure that everything comes back down to their level. And I'm also building up skills in them as well and building capacity of them as business owners to make the best decisions for them. So I'd say the, the biggest impact is definitely the coaching that I received, even if it's a different realm. Sure. Um, I think a lot of that translates from from one industry to the next. Absolutely. What's been your biggest learning as a business owner? <laughs> time, you know, it's, it's definitely time. <laughs> um, I feel like I am a pretty decent with time management and it's still always creep up on you and it'd be something that you need to um, improve upon. So I think that, you know, there's, there's a difference between working in your business and working on your business. Um, and that split uh, with your time is definitely the most difficult thing to do, um, especially because I have a small team of bookkeepers behind me mm -hmm. um, and delegating and making sure that, you know, I'm working as efficiently for the company as I can in order to help to grow it and support my clients and their businesses, um, making sure I'm using my time and using their time in a smart way um, so that we are, you know, flourishing not only in our business, but also ourselves personally. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned the working on versus in. It's mm -hmm. um, 
it's a struggle to be able to give yourself permission to work on, uh, at least that's what I find with our clients, because the day to day is always going to be calling for you, right? And oh, yes. trying to pull you into it. But the, so one of the tools we have our clients do is, you know, evaluate how much is your time worth? So let's just use fake numbers. You know, it's worth $100 an hour. Great. So then why are you doing all those $25 an hour jobs? Right? Mm -hmm. Why are you allowing the business to suck you into that? Because you're, you know, the opportunity cost is huge. So. Or, or you just get sidetracked. Something like, it's, right? you know, <laughs> I am, I am a, a sucker for really good formatting. And sometimes you just, <laughs> like, whenever you stop and you're like, this is not, this right. is not it. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so progress, think, not perfection, right? Yes, <laughs> for sure. We know that business success doesn't happen in isolation. So tell us about one of your biggest challenges during the years and maybe a fellow business owner that came alongside you and helped you through it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very lucky that with the, the bookkeeping world, there is a community. Mm -hmm. uh, and so whenever I have any sort of struggles, I can always go to one of several different groups that I know um, to get the support that I need, even if it's down to what's the best way to do this in QuickBooks, <laughs> or I'm really struggling with this client whenever it comes to X, Y, Z. Um, so I think that that is um, one of the great assets is making sure that you have a community. Mm -hmm. um, I loved uh, helping out other bookkeepers that were just starting their business as well. Mm -hmm. um, I love to pay it forward. So I think helping out other people to get started on some of my hard knocks mm -hmm. that I start off with yeah. as a business owner. <laughs> um and it just, it's, it's a lot of like learning the trade, learning the skill. Um, there's, there's a lot that is involved with different business owners that sometimes the, the education and the programs that you go to, isn't going to teach you specifically this problem that you're going to have with square, you right. know, it's, it's, right. <laughs> it's going to be a, an individualized case and it's going to be something that you learn along the way. Mm. And so I always try to, to give back whenever it comes to, you know, coaching somebody one-on-one, -on -one, whenever it comes to starting their bookkeeping business or being involved in those communities and making sure that I am just as active in them as I have received in the past too. Yeah. I, I love that principle you said of pay it forward. So if, you know, if somebody's taking the time to help you, I love that you're like, Hey, I, I owe it to, to the next generation or the next round of business owners to, to pass on that information as well. That's fantastic. Yeah. And it's just fun too. It's fun. To do that. <laughs> it is fun to help others, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Terry, if I asked you to pick three people in your business owner journey that you're most grateful for being there, uh, in terms of helping with your business growth, who are those three people and how they help you? Oh my gosh. Well, number one's my husband. Um, we, again, we have the ramen business and then he, what I think it's really funny because I think he recently just hired himself for tarot business solutions as well, uh, which is <laughs> <laughs> really great. We're kind of sharing and, and bouncing off of each other, but you know, we have, we have a busy life and we have a two-year-old and mm -hmm. we're both business owners uh, very active. So making sure that we're supporting each other in that has just been huge. Um, yeah. Wow. Three of them. Okay. So the other one I would say is my sister, uh, my sister, even though she lives in Seattle, she is always just my support person whenever it comes to this. And we're always bouncing ideas off of each other. Um, and she seems to be like one of my bigger cheerleaders whenever it comes to the growth that my business is, um, going through. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other one is going to be my my dear friends, uh, couple Josh and Christina. Um, they have also have been very involved with my company as well, but they've been one of my bigger cheerleaders as well. Um, they're the first person to be out there without, you know, having a marketing title going. You need to talk to Terry. <laughs> um, and so it's uh, it's amazing to to feel the the support around me. Mm. Um, I think that you know I've I've had some. I've had a community. I have a really great team of bookkeepers behind me supporting me, but the people close in my life as things get a little bit busier, as I'm really trying to um, grow and continue to make the next game. Um, it's really the people around me that have been huge supports for me. That's fantastic. You mentioned the, you used the word cheerleader a, a couple of times, which makes me think about, you know, our, <clears throat> our mindset or, or what we believe and how we feel. So, Talk a little bit about that. How have they, how have, 
has their cheerleading been so beneficial to you? Yeah. So I think, you know, it's the, the cheerleading really helps me to get back to that principle of working on my business Mm -hmm. of that growth. Um, I think that, you know, if I'm, if I'm in the trenches too much, or if I'm frustrated about something, um, going on in my, in my business, or I want to be a little bit further with a goal, it's that cheerleading that brings me back to, well, look at all that you have accomplished so far. Um, look at every piece that is together. Look at all that is working or, you know, it's, it's coming, it's coming around the corner, you know? So that cheerleader piece, um, especially with people that just know you, um, and want to see the best for you, but, also won't be afraid to tell you if you're messing up like that, that's the sweet spot of the cheerleader right there. so whenever you get that that little cheer you're like okay all right let's go <laughs> I can do this um let's continue going forward things are working out exactly the way that I have envisioned and it's going in the right direction and you're right um so yeah just the the support um and that that little pep talk it's almost like having little personal, like little Johns that are just hype men behind me <laughs> at all point. Uh, so <laughs> it's always a good time. <laughs> you mentioned um, being able to remind you of all your accomplishments. It's it's interesting to, to see that we so easily look at all of the things that didn't happen or the mistakes we made or the, the things we haven't achieved yet. Um, But equally, and I'd say even more importantly is, well, wow, look at all the things that we have achieved over the last three months or over the last year. And, and by spending time on that, it's like, well, crap, if I did all that stuff, then if I was to focus more on the business, imagine what else I could be able to do. Absolutely. But, you know, growth, growth comes, it's not overnight. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that if you are, if so, I, I know that we are really big on goal setting and the end game and everything else, but if you don't stop and actually see what you have accomplished along the way, you're going to get lost in the trenches. So I think it's really great to have those support people that make you stop and see that at some times, because whenever you are really busy with the work that you do, um, and you're balancing the the work with the, the dog getting money in the backyard, <laughs> Not that I had to just deal with that today. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's just important to really take those breathers and see, you know, zoom out and see things for what they are. Yeah. Every week we ask our client to tell us what their biggest success was from the previous week. And then more importantly than that, how they celebrate it. Because yes. we want to condition ourselves, our subconscious to when something good happens, we get rewarded. And then we work towards more more good things. And then- Every quarter we have them, part of their homework for our 90-day planning session is what were your wins for the last quarter? And we have them put it up on post-it notes and, you know, put it up on the wall and share out to the team because it's, to your point, it's so critical to acknowledge and recognize and feel that feeling of accomplishment. Oh, absolutely. And mine would definitely be rewarding with taco night with my daughter. So there you go. Fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) Terry, as you think about the next three to five years, what's the biggest challenge that you see that you're going to face in reaching your goals? And who are the types of people that you need to, you may need to overcome those challenges? Yeah. So I think with, with, uh, the, the growth that my company is looking to do. So we've kind of been a catch them all whenever it comes to different types of businesses, which I don't think is a bad place to be. Uh, I think people say you need to niche, you need to niche, you need to niche. It's also important to make sure that you're finding the niche that's right for you. So I've been really happy to work with such a wide um, scope of different businesses and industries that I'll continue working with. I love my clients to death. Um, but we really want to start to grow and focus into the vocational schools and the higher education, the for-profit, um, cosmetology, the, um, uh, phlebotomy schools, the cooking classes, like those kinds of things that have to manage, um, not only their business, but also student account receivables Mm. and help to do that communication with those students as well to make sure that they're transparent. So, I want to bridge the the world of education um, back with this business. So that's going to be our bigger challenge is, is really making that a focus mm-hmm. um, and growing in that realm and coming up with not only um, our systems for it as a company, 
but also making sure that we're bending to what each of those schools and business owners are going to need that's going to be useful for them. Yeah, absolutely. I like what you said about um, as you were talking through niching or how to niche because there's different ways to niche, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning focusing on small business owners could in and of itself be a niche, right? Versus absolutely. all business owners, right? Or focusing on micro business owners and as opposed to all businesses. So um, I think that that's a good aha because people can get can misinterpret that guidance and direction and to have a takeaway. Well, I have to only focus on one industry. No, you just have to know who your target audience is and be able to talk to them specifically instead of uh, generally or generically. Yeah, absolutely. And if I could like describe what my niche is right now, it's that individual business owner who is hands-on with their business. Mm. That's really been the foundation for what we have been looking for so far. Yeah. It's been a lot of those creatives who started that company, um, who are making the product. Um, I've got a, I've got a client who makes animatronic Halloween props, <laughs> but you know, like it's, it's those kinds of things, talking with those kind of business owners who are passionate about what they do and they're, mm -hmm. they are the business um, has been a lot of our focus is collecting those type of businesses and helping them out. Yeah. Um, we don't ever want to stop getting those clients because I love them <laughs> so much. They're, they're the funnest clients to get um, to help and support and help them to to grow and know their numbers along the way and not be afraid of tax season. Yes. Um, so I think that that's been that's been mostly our focus so far. And I love that you brought up that point that you know it doesn't have to just be an industry in the end. Yeah. to go ahead and, and know what kind of what you're looking for. And for everyone listening, you can have more than one niche if you have mm -hmm. enough resources to be able to communicate to more than one. Right? It absolutely. would mean that you have to have different marketing messages and different communications, but yeah, it's absolutely possible to to have more than one. So with the with the evolution in terms of where you're going next in the next 3 to 5 years, who are the types of people that you're going to need to help you with that that transition, that evolution? Yeah. So I think right now it's a lot about connecting to the right um, organizations. Okay. Um, there's a lot of organizations out there that help to support for-profit vocational schools mm -hmm. um, and career tech education schools. Okay. Um, so for one of them, there's CQ um, that I'm definitely going to be getting involved with. Um, I'm hoping to go ahead and be involved with uh, so many different conferences this year because I discovered there's so many for vocational schools. It's it's a beautiful <laughs> thing. Um, and again, I love community and I love growth and development of coaching. So the idea that there are these conventions to help mm -hmm. these business owners in such a specific um, area to, to learn and grow and to help me learn and grow a little bit more in the industry too. I'm so excited about that. Um, so I'm looking to just jump in there. I think for the first couple, I'm not even going to get a table. I'm just going to be attending the events. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be there. So if you're watching this and you know, you're going to be at one of those conventions, like I will be hunting you down, please say hello. Um, <laughs> I just want to learn as much as possible and just connect with as many people and, and really start to build a really great networking in this industry as we continue to grow and think about our expansion. Wonderful. Last question, Jim Rohn. An awesome business guru said, we become the average of the five people that we spend the most time with. So Terry, as you think about that quote, what advice would you have for business owners who are doing it, trying to do it on their own, who feel like they they shouldn't ask others for help or don't need help and, and just got to figure it out by themselves? So I have purposely started to grow my company backwards. And what I mean by that is that a lot of time industries like bookkeeping or um, other similar industries uh, where you start to get like one client at a time and you slowly start to grow. Usually those start with just you alone as the business. Yeah. Um, and you start to grow and the second you get too busy, that's whenever you start to think about growing a team. Um, I'm doing an opposite. Um, so we are actually a group of about six of us that support these clients. Um, a lot of my bookkeepers and everything else, they kind of see this as their side hustle, which I love because that's how I started off with this work. Uh -huh. um, but they're helping to support with them and they're willing to grow with me as the company continues to grow. 
Um, and with that, I have a team of people already mm. um, as we're continuing to sharpen our procedures. I've got other people to bounce ideas off of sure. as I find myself coming up short with something because there's always going to be something that is sure. coming up short or stretched too thin. Um, I've got a team of people to turn to. So I think that making sure that you are not holding off on growing your team until you're drowning. Mm. Um, but thinking about what is the best way to grow a team that's going to help and support my growth at any point in the future. Um, and how is a smaller operations really going to help you as a business owner, um, get your procedures down and get your systems down and figure out your budgets, um, earlier than whenever it's too late and you're drowning with too much time. So, I'd say find your team now, mm. find your support system now, even if that is Upwork and some contractors, um, who are your turn to people that you're going to start to build um, to help to support you in your operations? Oh, I love it. That's great advice. Terry, it sounds like you've been blessed with some incredible people who have helped you on your journey. Uh, if they were all here on the show today, what would you want to say to them? Oh my gosh, all my bookkeepers, like you're, you guys are the best, <laughs> especially Heather, Jackie, uh, Josh, Christina, and Mike, like shout out to you guys. I, this is going to be the cheesiest thing for them to watch afterwards. I'm gonna help them <laughs> in the room. Um, no, but they, they are huge supports. They have been, they've been with me for some years now. And I, I really, um, I couldn't do this without them and the work that they do. Um, and I just, I'm, I'm excited to grow this business and this company, not just for my success, but for the success of my team, because they're all just so wonderful. So thank you for, for being, uh, the support, um, and helping, uh, Tarot Business Solutions to become what it is now, what it will be in the future. And just in case you know, you don't want to leave out your fur baby. So you might want to give him another shout out. <laughs> I don't know if you saw me block the other one. I was trying to jump down. Uh, that's going to be on there. I was like, well, fantastic. I guess my cats are joining in on this uh, podcast. But hey, it, 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 it's, a, it's a family uh, business model. Everybody has to be involved, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Sarah, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you so much, Tim, for having me. Thanks for listening to the Self-Made is a Myth show with your host, Coach Tim Campsaw. Please help spread this movement by liking and subscribing to our show and following us on Facebook and LinkedIn or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. To join our movement, go to BeMadTogether.com. Okay, folks, that's a wrap. Please pay it forward and be sure to tune in next time to the Self-Made is a Myth podcast.